All right, so we're losing daylight here. So I, of course, I'm not gonna get the tent set up today, but I can talk about some of the things that I learned trying to do the step-by-step, step, you know, let's put the tent up first time uh, disaster. Um, one of the things was they tell you to be careful with the poles, you're gonna bend the eyelets, and, uh, but to lift that tent up, I'm just one person, so I'm trying to show you how to do it as one person. I bent, bent the eyelets somewhat, not, not a whole lot. So what I bought was this uh, permanent Gorilla Tape outdoor, uh, all weather, okay? So tonight I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this tape around all of those eyelets so that it'll reinforce them. And of course, I'm, I'm probably gonna have to take this hammer and bend them back just a little bit, which is another thing. I mean, if you, if you saw my previous videos, I forgot to bring a damn hammer, but uh, I, but I wanted to show you one of the one of the problems with the tent um, is that when I pull this tarp off, it's got all these little rings, these little hooks, and they catch on all the poles, which is, I mean, it's a problem, but I don't see how else you would design it differently. So I don't fault Cabela's. I don't think it's a bad design. I'm just telling you that you got to get things right the first time or you're going to create a lot of work for yourself, which I did on the first time putting the tent up because I didn't know where the front door was versus the windows. The window looks like a door to me. And so I actually had the, uh, the door, I mean, the, the, uh, this is actually a window on this side where I thought the door was gonna be. And the actual door is on this side, which is where the gray stuff is. So we're, we're gonna get into all that. So a little attention to detail, not in the directions as usual, but see how that black hook is right there? When you stake this thing out, make sure that black hook gets on top. You know, this one, well, not this one, but another couple of them I put around on the bottom, made them really hard to hook onto. Uh, just a little stuff like that. Like I said, we're going to get a lot better at this as soon as we get it. But uh, you can kind of see that with the window side, you just got the one zipper versus coming over here with this is going to eventually be the vestibule uh, coming up this way. Now, one bad thing about this tent is you ain't never going to set this up in the rain. That would be a horrible experience, and it's going to take you some time, especially by yourself. I mean, it's worth the time in the end. Um, but uh, and if you got two people, I bet you could cut it down to maybe 10, 15 minutes. Uh, so you're going to want to be looking real close at that weather forecast coming in to make sure you're going to have time to put this up. Otherwise, you better just stay where you are. And uh, you know, like me, I'm a traveling traveling camper, and so I never know a lot of times what the weather's going to be like. So I'm going to have to be real, real uh, attentive to what where I'm going and what the weather forecast looks like. If there's 50% chance of rain or or more than of course I'm, I'm going to be staying where i am i'm not going to be traveling all right so that's it for now okay before i take it down completely i want to show you this is the front door okay it's got cabela's on it which kind of makes sense all right and uh you know we, we, we got that design with the molecule design that's going to make this thing super sturdy i got uh, i've already taken one of the poles off but you got the poles going around it and it looks like an electron traveling around but see, look at that. That looks like a door, doesn't it? That's, but that's supposed to be a window, but you could actually unzip that and just step out of the tent right there. But of course, you're gonna have the fly over top if it's a rainy night. But if you just had to put it up like this on a dry night, you could just, two people, you know, you, you can come out this door to pee and then come out the other door and you're not stepping all over. Now it's supposed to be a four person tent. I wouldn't use it as a four person tent. But you know, anyway, I just wanna show you. And here's the, here's the other window. Now this one doesn't, uh, well, it unzips from the inside, it looks like. Um, and of course you got that little window there. That's where you bring in all your cables and or you know What, what I was saying in, in a previous video and I may include it is you if you got uh, Somebody out in the rain they got their rain gear on and you say hey man I don't want to get out of the tent. I don't want to get wet Can you bring me uh, thus and such whatever and they can just hand you through that little vent right there And you don't have to worry about uh, everything getting wet um, Of course, you're gonna have to lift that fly up just a little bit, but uh, all right, so let's keep let's keep going all right, it's getting dark. I'm not sure how much we're gonna get out, but I wanted you to see this because this is the technique that I'm gonna to try to use to put this tent up. Saw a guy do this in a speed video, but what you do is you clip on one half of the poles and then you use them to lift up the tent and then clip them in so that you don't bend them and you're not using those poles to lift the tent up. So let's just show you that kind of briefly and then when we do it for real, we'll do it that way. are unclipped. So we kind of push the tent up. Yeah. 
And then we would continue. <clears throat> I think that technique is gonna work fantastic, okay? So uh, we'll see when we go to put the tent up for the first time, but you saw how easy it was. And if I just put that other tent in, boom, the whole thing's up and then you just clip it all in. All right, here we are. Lynchburg has a rock and roll station. Lynchburg has a rock and roll station. I don't believe it. For years, all we had was country music and classic rock. And I mean, they're playing some head banging stuff, man. This is great. I'm gonna be rocking while we speed put up this tent for my first speed video. All right, so let's cut that off and talk about what we're gonna do here. So you see this, this is that poncho that I use with the other tent as a ground cover, all right? This is gonna go underneath the vestibule for the tent. So that when you're, you know, you're getting in that tent, you got them muddy boots and them muddy shoes. You just put this out and this is gonna go towards the front of the tent. Now, the way we're gonna stake this out, I saw this in a video, I wish I could take credit for it. Because what I was doing before was I was telling you to go 90 degrees and pull them tight, and then go 90 degrees and pull those tight. Well, geez, it's a lot quicker this way that this guy did it. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna lay this out and we're gonna tap each peg in, boom, 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 all the way around just a little bit. Then we're gonna come back and we're gonna tighten up each peg all the way around until we get that tent really stretched out to the max. Okay, and that's gonna go really quick first speed video from a video idiot. It's gonna be good, gonna be good. Let's get work. All right, Ooh, I'm right breaking a sweat down here in, what, 65 degrees? <laughs> All right, so what did we learn? Okay, this is about my third time trying to put this thing up the right way, and uh, I'm only showing you the right way. I didn't show you all the bad stuff earlier when the video idiot was the video idiot. So, check it out. See the Cabela's on the front? I was kind of holding that up in the speed video. That's the front of the tent, okay? I, I had to learn that the hard way. I had the front of the tent the wrong side, because there's other other openings that look like they're the front of the tent. That's where the vestibule is going to go. All right. Now what I did is also I staked out the two on, on the vestibule first this time uh, when I flipped it over after staking it in upside down. And, uh, and that way I could get the rest of the tent going off of those two stakes in the front. Because so, the front of the tent is going to be your most important area once the vestibule gets in and everything. Uh, the other thing is on the straps going off to the pegs here, there's a little ring that we're going to be hooking into for the, uh, the canopy that goes over the tent. All right. So it's important that you get those rings facing up because my first couple times putting the tent up, I wasn't paying attention to that and I put the rings underneath, you know, and it's kind of, anyway, it just creates a bad situation. So you just want them rings facing up. Um, I love these steel tent pegs. I mean, that tent, I, I, I could just leave it staked like that and just put the canopy over it and, you know, on a normal night, I, I think you'd just be just fine, but boy, oh boy, when you get into staking out that canopy, this tent is bomb proof. I mean, it's the bomb. I bet I bet I could survive a hurricane in this damn thing. But let's keep going. Man, that rock and roll. Yeah, baby, Lynchburg has rock and roll! Man, you guys got to thank me for these daggone videos at some point. Forgot to put the mic on. I just made the video. We're doing it again. All right. So from the directions, okay, those crappy directions that I was telling you about, we're going to go A, which is the left corner here, over to there. We're going to go B, which is the right side here next to the vestibule, over to that side. And then we're going to go C. So it goes A, B, C. Now what I'm going to do when I get that back to Florida is I'll label these on the tent, uh, probably with just my label maker. You know, you, you don't want to be, well, I mean, you could write it on with a permanent marker, I guess, or whatever you want to do. But, you're going to have A underneath B, which goes underneath C, all right? And then what we're going to do, and I saw this, once again, I can't take credit for it, this guy that did speed video, we're going to clip in on one side of the tent, the A, the B, and the C pole, and then we're going to use that 
with the poles hanging loose on the other side of the tent to lift the tent up and then we're going to clip those in okay and that way you're not going to damage the poles the way i tried to do it before was i would i push the pole in and you're kind of forcing it and i actually bent them a little bit now you're going to notice these poles are taped okay i went out and i bought some gorilla tape and i put it on here to reinforce these poles a little better because i ain't taking this tent back i'm going to tell you what I, i've never seen a tent this bomb proof ever and so i don't see any reason that i'm going to be sending this back ever all right so here let's get going Woo. Man, next speed video. Woo! Rock and roll! Rock and roll, baby! All right, so... <laughs> Unfortunately, the video where I told you I'd staked in the tent upside down because I'm a video idiot, and then I went back and I put it right side up, you're probably wondering, boy, how did that tent flip like that? But yeah, anyway, I recorded that video in speed. So anyway, but so here you're looking, you know, this is the vestibule that's got the Cabela's right here. That tells you that this is the front of the tent. And, uh, you know, one thing that wasn't in the directions, you know, and uh, by the way, these are color coded. Okay, so you got you got black here. You got green here, and then you got yellow here. So you see all these gray clips? Those are gonna be for poles that are gonna wrap around the tent, okay? And, and by the way, it's gonna look like, just like electrons moving around a molecule. That's why this thing's so sturdy when I'm done. But uh, so, you know, to, to be honest, I clipped into the wrong clips when I put it up the first time, but of course I went back and fixed it all. So these are green, okay? So you got green, black, and uh, uh, yellow and, uh, and then they had these straps here now I'm not sure what this is all about because there's nothing I'm gonna go back and reread those directions but it just seems to me that you're gonna put that strap there and that strap there and the black strap there uh, I mean I guess it's uh, just a different way of and what this hook here is for I'm not quite sure yet um, but uh, yeah we're getting there um, you know this this is what I was talking about this looks like a door doesn't it First time I put it up, I, th <laughs> this, I thought this was going for the vestibule. What an idiot. God almighty. And then, of course, this one's obvious because you got the extra little area here where you can bring in uh, uh, wires and, uh, and, and hand stuff to people in the tent. Um, so we're going to get to putting the canopy on. I'm going to go regroup and read the directions again. So this is why I'm saying, Cabela's, get your crap together, man. These are the worst damn directions I've ever seen. But anyway, let's just kind of go over these just real quick. All right. So one thing I forgot to point out is the two uh, places next to the vestibule have three pins and you're gonna wanna use the center pin for the poles and uh, that's in the directions. But uh, assemble all the poles, each sleeve and clips are color coded. Now, if you look at the directions here, see what I'm talking about? You got A over here and that's the front door which goes that way, that was the first pole, and then you got the B pole, and then you got the C pole. So that's what, what they're saying for the order. And then carefully lift the pole to set the tents, and then attach the C clips of the three poles from the bottom up. Okay, so we did all of that. So what, 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 yeah, five, six, okay. So now it doesn't say anything about those little straps, but I, I'm, I'm about 99% certain that those would be attached to the poles, okay. And then it goes right into pole D, follows the seam line from points C1 to C2 over the top of the existing poles. Next, insert the opposite end in the corresponding ring pin and repeat the process for the poles. So, so this is basically the poles that are going to go around the sides. And uh, we're going to go ahead and do that. All right, we owe Cabela's a, an apology. Where poles intersect, there is a hook and a loop webbing attachment. Pass webbing over the intersecting poles through the D-ring and then back onto itself. So what they're talking about is the thing that I was talking about, which is that right there, which is gonna hold those poles together. That one there, that one there, that one there, and that one there. And that's why I'm a video idiot. Yeah, one thing I didn't point out, see, when we put these these other poles on, this is C. 
and then this is D so you're coming off of once again off of the vestibule and then you're coming over with E okay there's D and then E okay anyway look at that you know I I can't believe it I put this thing up three four times and I never got that one on the strap look at that man that that adds a whole new dimension to the sturdiness of this thing. I mean, can you imagine? Look at that. Oh, man, wind's blowing, wind's blowing. Holy shit. You know, this thing ain't going nowhere. Holy moly. This must be the most well-constructed tent I believe I've ever seen. Just like a molecule. Look at them electrons flowing right around that thing. Just whoom, 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 you know. Wow. I would love to meet the engineer that designed this thing. Uh, well, today we're running out of daylight and we'll get the, uh, I'm just going to throw the, uh, the the tarp over top of it. Now, the only important thing with the uh, the, the, the cover here, let's get the directions. Ah, all right. So the, let's see. Anyway, the important thing is to have the gray portion over top of the door. And I've made that mistake before and because you can't twist that thing around because those little hooks catch on everything. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw that over top of the tent just to, and then we'll pick up tomorrow and finish it up. Man, if y'all knew how many times I, how <laughs> much time I waste recording and then realizing I had it on 10X, which is, again, I got to delete that. So I didn't show the vestibule, but all it is is a pole that comes up right here, and there's three little pegs there and three pegs there, and that's those are the only two with the three pegs. Um, I was real proud that I nailed the uh, poncho. Look at that. So you can put your boots right underneath the, the vestibule and not bring them muddy things in the tent, and uh, the water, you know, is going to flow right underneath the tent and right over that poncho and right out into the thing because you got it on a little bit of a downhill lie. You know, of course, the doors are always, you always want the door downhill if you can if you can do it. Now, look at all these guidelines. Holy moly, you got two two on the vestibule. You got one here, one here. You could stake all of these out. And a nice touch with the tent is they've got these. Uh, you can do a Boy Scout knot for tightening up ropes, you know, so that what you do is, you know, once you get it out, you can use this and you can tighten that that up with the with that that's a real nice touch a lot of tents don't come with that and you have to you have to pull out your boy scout manual and uh and, and put that knot on there i can't remember what that knot's called it's been so long but here's one that's undone so you can kind of see you know you can get you can get get out here a ways and really brace that tent but man i just sleep in it just like this about 90 percent of the time unless you're getting well i'd say about 30 40 mile an hour winds That'd be the only thing you need to do because them stakes are way down in the ground. All right. So this is what we've been waiting on. The uh, been raining, well, almost straight uh, all night long, all day. Tents set up back there. Now uh, we're going to make another video. This one's gotten too long. And uh, we're going to check see if any water got in the tent and take a tour of the inside of the tent. I want to show you that, uh, that thing on the bottom. I typed up my own directions on how to put this thing up, but we're going to test them in that video with the speed video, and I, you know, that's basically, I'm not going to talk too much about it, but, uh, you know, a couple things that, you, if you go back and you read directions, you know, they, they point out that if you don't stake the guy lines out, which I did not do, um, that uh, that provides a better ventilation for the tent, so that you don't get that condensation build up in there, um, so they do recommend doing that. Um, I got to come up with a good way to, to re-roll them guy lines after you, you fold them out uh, and hang them, you know, next to the tent so they don't catch on the poles and stuff. But uh, anyway, that's enough for this video for now, man. Watch the next video. I am going to attach my directions to the next video uh, for you to download as a text document if I can figure out how to do it. I remember you're 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 watching a video idiot here. I, I don't know. I'm just learning as I go how to do this stuff. So anyway, just. I want to show you that <clears throat> if that tent stays dry, this would be a good test. You know, imagine, imagine you're out camping, man, and it's this cold, miserable day like this, and all you want to do is sit around that tent in your sweats and play Yahtzee or some cards with somebody, you know, that it's so important just to be dry. 
you know, you got no place to go, and there's no hotel room, especially with COVID, you know, maybe the hotel rooms are closed, man. All right, so that's it. Wait for the next video. All right.